so it turns out that if you look across different tissues, different tissues are actually renewed at different rates. So basically within any given tissue, um, there are specific needs or demands of, of the stem cell pool um, that are particular to that um, niche and, and environment. So uh, some tissues in, in mammals are tissues that have constant turnover or high turnover. So examples of this are the, the hematopoietic system, where the stem cells, which are hematopoietic stem cells, reside in bone marrow, um, as well as intestine. Intestine is a, is a very high turnover tissue, and the stem cells reside in the crypt of the intestine, and they're very important for um, regenerating uh, the epithelial of the, of the intestine. Um, the skin is also a, a high turnover tissue, and stem cells are, are critical for maintaining um, healthy skin during the aging process. Some tissues have much lower turnover, so the brain is an example of this. Um, though there are two specialized neural stem cell niches, and neurogenesis, so the formation of new neurons from stem cells in these niches, is important for um, healthy aging and maintenance of cognitive function and, and sensory functions with age. Now in the skeletal muscle, um, the stem cells are known as satellite cells, and these cells are important um, for the repair process um, after, after damage to skeletal muscle. Now stem cell exhaustion is one of the major hallmarks of aging. So most people are familiar at this point um, with this concept of hallmarks of aging. So these are, are processes that are, um, inv are involved in um, aging and decline in tissue function with age. And so stem cell exhaustion meets the criteria as a hallmark of aging. And so that means that it is, um, it is observed in normal physiological aging and that uh, defects in stem cell function can actually accelerate tissue aging. And the rejuvenation of stem cells, or if you increase their functionality, that can actually um, enhance repair or, um, or improve aging symptoms with, within that tissue. And so uh, the stem cell theory of aging is one of several theories of aging, and, um, and it's just one contributor to the aging process. And so the stem cell theory of aging posits that aging is a result of the failure of stem cells to replenish cells across tissues, and that this results in a loss of tissue and organ function during aging. And so, as I mentioned, um, aging is accompanied by stem cell defects that affect various tissues across the body. And stem cell proliferation generally decreases uh, with age. However, there are exceptions to this rule, and I'll mention um, some exceptions in upcoming slides. Now, during aging, there's also a skewing of stem cell lineages. And so, as I'll mention in, in upcoming slides, um, some stem cells will actually generate um, different types of differentiated cells with age. It's also now known that there's an overall depletion of stem cell pools with age, and that this is due to a loss of quiescent cells. And so once these quiescent stem cells are lost, this is very detri detrimental to the, the lineage because there's no longer a reservoir for differentiated cells once these um, quiescent stem cells are depleted. It's also been shown that the quiescent stem cells that remain in the aged body will actually drift deeper into a quiescent state. And so this is also, also detrimental to the lineage because it means that these um, quiescent stem cells are actually much harder to activate. So it's harder to get them out of the quiescent state into the actively proliferating state in order to, to go on and, and differentiate and contribute to repair. So all of this together results in a failed maintenance of, of tissues, as well as a decrease in regenera uh, regeneration of tissues with age. So a lot of what we know about the stem cell theory of, of aging and support for stem cell theory of aging comes from normal physiological aging and observations um, in terms of what happens to just normal stem cells during the normal aging process. However, there's also evidence for this theory from accelerated aging syndromes and accelerated aging models. So for example, um, hutchison guilford progeria is an accelerated aging syndrome that results from mutations in the laminate aging. And so this individual here has hutchison guilford progeria, and you can see he exhibits a number of features of accelerated aging, although he's, he's quite young. So for example, there's a thinning and wrinkling of the skin that occurs, there's decreased muscle mass, increased joint stiffness, as well as an overall decrease in, in lifespan. And so uh, there are also mouse models of Hutchison-Gilford progeria, and investigation of these mouse models has 
confirm that there's a, a depletion of stem cell pools in this bridge area. So for example, here, uh, looking at a, a section through a hair follicle, um, in wild type mice, there are um, numbers, of, a large number of, of stem cells that are present in the, in the hair follicle, and those are shown here in red. But in the progeria model that recapitula recapitulates the sy uh, symptoms of lamin A mutations, um, there is a, a depletion of these stem cell pools. So there's a loss of the, of the red signal here. And this isn't limited to just Hutchinson, Hutchinson Gilford progeria. It's also been observed in Werner syndrome, another progeria. And even in the individuals that have these syndromes, there's a, um, a depletion of mesenchymal stem cells that have features of premature aging.